All right. So uh, in the last class, we have discussed about Irish mood dog, John Fowles and Muriel Spark, if I'm not wrong. And also before that, we have discussed about Kingsley Amis. So while I was dealing with Kingsley Amis, I told you that he has written a campus fiction. Okay. What is the name of that novel written by Kingsley Amis? Lucky Jim. What? Sorry? Lucky Jim. Lucky Jim, yes. Very good. So, we have read that it was a campus fiction. I told you that in the later class, we will be discussing about campus fiction. So, it's the right time to discuss about it because the next authors, uh, A.S. Bate and Malcolm Bradbury, they also uh, wrote about this campus fiction. Okay. Then we have Angela Carter. So, we will be reading about campus fiction authors in this class. Who are they? And uh, what are the important uh, writing associated with campus fiction? Because in UGC net, frequently this question has been asked. That uh, if you, uh, they, they will give you the four options. They will ask you to choose campus fiction. Or uh, they will ask the works of campus fiction author. So this becomes very important. So... In the beginning of this uh, modern age, I have discussed about the uh, postmodernism. I mean, uh, this modernism, postmodernism. Uh, I was talking about the features of the uh, postmodernism. What are the important events we have discussed about it? If you remember, okay, Cold War, Vietnam War, Suez Canal Crisis, then Student Hungarian Revolution. Then we have May 68 revolution, Berlin crisis, Cuban missile crisis. These are all the things that has somehow shaped the work of that time. Okay, these are all the incidents. Then I have also talked about the key terms associated with postmodernism. Those are fascist, intertextuality, metafiction, temporal distortion, minimalism, maximalism, magic realism, and faction. So who coined this term intertextuality? I have told you in the last class who, who coined this term intertextuality. Do you remember? Julia Kristeva, isn't it? And William H. Gus uh, coined this term metafiction. Okay. So these are very important ideas. In UGC, they ask question every now and then. Now, these are the pros to war British uh, fictions. So we have, in, in during the 1950s, we have Doris Lessing, William Golding, and Graham Greene, the very canonical authors of that time. Then in 1960s, we have John Fowles, Angela Carter. So we are reading about Angela Carter in this class. So uh, Angela Carter, Muriel Spark, we have already read about Muriel Spark in the last class. Angus Wilson, John Berger, then Irish Murdoch, A.S. Bate. Okay, 1970s. They started writing from 1970s, and they were very much active until this 20th century. Okay, so because if, if you remember, A.S. Bet has written this particular novel, Possession, a Romance in 1990, for which she also won the Booker Prize of 1990. Then in 1980s, we have Ian McEwan, we, about whom we have already read, Martin Amis, uh, Jeanette Winterson, Julian Barnes, Salman Rushdie, Graham Swift, Kazuo Ishiguro, Timo Timo. Now, let us try to discuss what are campus novels and why they are so famous and who, what are the important works associated with campus fiction. So a com campus novel is basically, it, it as a genre, it emerges in 1970s and 1980s. Okay, these novels are set around universities and colleges or dealing with wayward academics let loose on the wider world. Okay, so the campus novel also known as academic novel is a novel whose main action is set in and around the campus of a university. The genre in its current form dates back to 1950s, okay, 1950s, but then it became popular popular in 1970s and 80s. Many well-known campus novels um, such as Kingsley Amis, Lucky Jane, we have discussed about it, uh, David Lodge, then we have uh, Malcolm Bradbury, Tom Sharp, Kingsley Amis, Mm, then we have the works of uh, Vila Cather, Jane Koichi, Philip Roth, Angus Wilson, A.S. Bate. These are all authors associated with campus fiction. Okay, so for example, see, J.M. Koichi's Disgrace, Philip Roth's The Human Stain, Noren Moskalaski's Nocturne. Then we have um, 
other authors uh, here you can see cp snow the masters malcolm bradbury eating people is wrong uh, stepping waste toward the history man cuts these are all books written by malcolm bradbury we will discuss it in today's class also okay david lodge has written changing places a tale of two campuses small world nick world okay tom sharp has written built on high all right so when it comes to campus fiction authors you will see that kingsley amis has written this lucky jim tom sharp has written wilt the wilt alternative wilton high porter house blay blue okay these are the works written by tom sharp then we have malcolm bradbury about whom we are going to read in this class so we will begin with uh, as bait okay she was born in 1936 and uh, Her books are very famous, um, especially the Possession, because it won the Booker Prize. That's why it is important. The first novel written by A. S. Bayat is Virgin in the Garden. It is set during the coronation of Elizabeth. Okay, so when did this uh, coronation of Elizabeth took place? Can you recall the exact year? What is the time span of her reign, Elizabeth's reign? Come on. Elizabeth fifty fifty eight. Yes, yes, exactly fifty fifty eight. That's what I wanted to ask. It is wrongly written here fifteen eighty eight. Okay, fifteen fifty eight to sixteen o three was the timeline of yeah. Elizabeth. I thought yeah. No, no. Be to Elizabeth fifty. No, it's really fifteen fifty eight. So while I see that I have written it wrong, I was thinking, let's see what what is your response. That's why I was not. Making it correct. So, fifteen fifty eight. Okay, it was said during the coronation of Elizabeth and age. Uh, she her reign, her time span of her reign expands from fifteen fifty eight to sixteen o three. Okay, after Elizabeth, who became the king of England? James, isn't it? Jacobi and Ira. Fifteen fifty from sixty o three to sixteen twenty five. Okay. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Virgin in the Garden is set during the Elizabethan age. All right, that's that much information you have to know about this particular novel, which was published in 1970. Then Possessions, a romance, very important novel, because it won um, A. S. Bayes the man uh, the Booker Prize. Okay, that's why it is very important. So what we see in this book is that contemporary versus Victorian times, past and present, much like that of John Fowles, the French Left Tail Boy. Okay, we will find also the reference to that novel. What happened in the John Fowles, the French Left Tail Boy? We were reading in the last class that the the, the novel is a postmodern novel. Okay, but the setting is Victorian time. It was set in which place? Do you remember? Lime Regis, isn't it in the Victorian time? Lime Regis. So uh, you will see that kind of scene here also because it is um, a novel about contemporary time versus Victorian time, past and present. So the 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 story goes like this: that uh, life of two modern scholars, they are exploring the life of two Victorian authors. Okay, one Victorian authors each. So for example. uh two persons are there in the contemporary time suppose uh, in in 2022 two person are uh, doing a research work on two authors who are from victorian age that kind of situation is there okay so roland mitchell roland mitchell roland mitchell is studying the life of randolph henry ash randolph henry ash is a uh, is an author from Victorian time. Okay, so he is researching on whom Randolph Henry Ash, and this Randolph Randolph Henry Ash is said to be modeled on Browning or Tennyson, either Browning or Tennyson. Understood? Then we have Maud Bailey. She is the girl. Okay, she is the lady. Maud Bailey is actually doing her research on Christabel Lamott. This Christabel Lamott is modeled on C. G. Rossetti from Victorian age. Okay, so they have not used the exact name. They they could have used Browning on or Tennyson, but they haven't. They could have used C. G. Rossetti, but they haven't. They have modeled their person on this 
these particular uh, means original figures, but they are not telling the name. They are uh, renaming them as Randolph, Kendi Ash, Christabel, Lamont. Much like that of uh, that that there is a particular technique to uh, um, to denote such kind of circumstances when you are taking someone from the contemporary time and then changing their name. Okay, there is a particular technique. I'm completely forgetting right now, but uh, um, I have told you in in my last classes. Okay, so for example, while I was teaching you, uh, I suppose uh, Virginia Bull or George Orwell, something like that. I, I told you about that. Where uh, D. H. Lawrence has been modeled upon some, uh, I mean, a particular figure has been modeled upon D. H. Lawrence. So there is a technique for that particular situation. Do you remember? That's a French term. Any of you remember that term? Roman Acclaim. Roman Acclaim. Okay. Roman Acclaim. Later, she gets to know that Christabel Lamotte, as her great great grand grandmother, during their research, okay, research करते करते उसको पता चलता है कि जो Christabel Lamotte, on which or oh, on whom I am researching, she was my great great grandmother. Mort Bailey की वो great grandmother थी, great great grandmother. So see how they are related, associated. She is researching on Christabel Lamotte. At that time, she didn't knew that she was her great great grandmother, but Later, she came to know during her research. So, research करने से बहुत कुछ पता चलता हम हमें. So, it was also a kind of ridicule. Okay, it was also a kind of satire on researchers. A. S. Bates' position is also a kind of satire on research scholars. Okay, so Roland Michel is studying the life of Randolph Ash, Henry Ash, which was modeled on, uh, who was modeled on Browning and Tennyson. Then. Mort Bailey is studying the life of Christopher Christabel Lamont, uh, who was modeled on C. G. Rossetti. These are very important characters to remember because uh, from position already questions has been asked. Once uh, a question has been asked from the title, second time they have asked this question. The structure of the novel incorporates many different styles, including fictional diary entries, letters, and poetry. This question has been asked in U. G. C. Okay, that. The structure of the novel comprises many genres such as letter, diaries, poetry, third person narrator. Okay, and it was the best seller of the 1990s. Best seller. Okay, so this question has been asked in UG Seller. Now, A.S. Bale, uh, in part, wrote Possession in response to John Fox's novel, The French Left Hand Woman. I have told you about this already. Now, other important work by A.S. Bale are uh, Biographer's Tale. It is a story. The story is about a postgraduate student. Again, see a kind of campus fiction like that of uh, possession. Possession was a campus fiction. Again, we we have this campus fiction. The story is about a postgraduate student, Phineas G. Nansen, who decides to write a biography about an obscure biographer, Scholes Destry Scholes. Okay, so this person, Phineas G. Nansen, is a postgraduate student. He decides to write a biography about an obscure biographer. Scholz Destry Scholz is already a biographer. Now his biography will be written by Phineas G. Nansen in the novel. Okay, so biographer still published in 2000. Then her novel, The Children's Book, was shortlisted for the 2009 Man Booker Prize. Okay, children's children's book. This is another novel written by A. S. B. So this much of information you have to know about A. S. B. Okay, you can also Search the Wikipedia entry and see the list of works, the important ones. But as of now, these are the important ones: Fortune in the Garden, Possession, Biographer Stale, The Children's Book. Then we have Malcolm Bradbury, as I have told you, he is uh, again associated with campus fiction author. Okay, he is associated with campus fiction author. So he has written this work, Eating People is Wrong. Eating people is wrong. History man. History man is a campus fiction. Okay, history man is known as classic example of campus fiction. 
Okay, do remember this classic example, very good example of campus trip. Eating people is wrong, published in, uh, sorry, published in 1959, eating people is wrong. Then history man published in 1975, previous year question has been asked, they have asked to uh, tell about uh, the two works which are campus fiction, okay. They have said that which of the following, which of the following two works are campus fiction, okay or comes under campus fiction. One was the history man. So do remember, history man is a campus, classic example of campus fiction. Now in history man, what happens? There, there are two, I mean, married couples, Howard Kirk and Barbara Kirk. Okay. It is a dark satire of academic life in the glass and steel universities. The British universities established in the 1960s, which followed their red brick predecessors. Now what is glass steel uh, universities say, signifies? Howard Kirk and Barbara Kirk, they are trapped in a loveless affair, loveless marriage. Okay. They don't love each other, but they marry. Okay. They marry each other with, without any love. So loveless marriage, they are somehow trapped in this relationship. And this glass and steel universities in this fiction actually symbolizes beautiful but fragile system. Okay, beautiful but fragile system. Okay, glass is very beautiful, like that of Howard Creek and Barbara's relationship. But at the same time, it is very fragile. Hai na, Jay? Glass dekhne mein bahut khubsurat lagta hai. But if you uh, throw a stone over it, it will break. So glass is very beautiful. At the same time, it is also fragile. And that was the case of relationship between Howard Creek and Barbara Creek. Their relationship looks very good. They, they look very happy, but internally they are trapped in that loveless marriage. That's the story. Okay. So it was a satire on academic life. History man. Do remember. Eating people is wrong. I have said it published in 1959. It is also very important. Read the, uh, I mean, plot from the, from Wikipedia, if possible. As of now, they have asked only from uh, history man. That's, I'm, that's why I'm telling you this in detail. Then. Who do you think you are? Published in 1976. It is a collection of short stories. Who do you think you are? Collection of short stories. Rates of exchange. Rates of exchange includes description of a performance of the imaginary opera We Don't Tuckle Drop, also described in Why Come Salaka. Okay, Why Come Salaka is another novel written by Malcolm Blackberry. So, rates of exchange in rates of exchange, he talks about imaginary opera which is also described in Why Comes Slacker. Then, the modern American novel, it is a non-fictional work, the modern American novel. Why Comes Slacker is a novel. Dangerous Pilgrimage, Transatlantic Mythologies and the novel. It is also a kind of non-fictional work. Dangerous Pilgrimage, Transatlantic Mythologies and the novel. Understood? That much you have to know about Malcolm Bradley. Now, who are the other authors associated with uh, um, Campus fiction. I have told you David Lodge is there. We will read David Lodge in detail. Don't worry about that. Then a few of the authors who have written one or two work only, which are campus fiction. And these are important. You can write it down. Villa Cather. Villa Cather has written The Professor's House in 1925. Write it down. Villa Cather, The Professor's House. Okay. Villa Cather has written A Professor's House. The Professor's House. Okay. Then we have James Coetzee's Disgrace. You already know about it. James Coetzee's Disgrace published in 1999. Philip Roth has written Human Stain. It is also written here. Human Stain. Write it down. Philip Roth has written Human Stain. Angus Wilson has written Anglo-Saxon Attitudes. Anglo-Saxon Attitudes. Angus Wilson. Then we have... Again... Sorry? Says, uh, what happened? Your voice is not clear. <laughs> Philip Roth has written okay. Human Stain. Angus Wilson has written Anglo Saxon Attitudes. Anglo Saxon Attitudes. Philip Roth, again, he has written The Professor of Desire. 
the professor of design written by philip Roth, published in 1977 okay so villa professor's house jm coed in a disgrace philip Roth made the human stain angus wilson ne likha hai anglo saxon attitude or the uh, uh, or philip Roth ne fir philip Roth ne likha hai the professor of desire as bait ka position humne abhi just padha to ye list aapko yaad rakh because they won't ask you in detail about campus fiction. They will ask you which of the following works are associated with, which of the two following works are associated with campus fiction. And they will give you these names. The Human Stain, Anglo-Saxon Attitude, The Professor of Desire, The Professor's House, Possession and Romance. Remember the titles. This is very important. Okay. C.P. Snow also uh, uh, wrote this, uh, this, The Masters. You can write it down. The Masters, C.P. Snow. Then Evelyn was uh, bright shade revisited is also a campus fiction. Evelyn was bright shade revisited. All right. So these are the campus fiction that you need to remember. We will read about David Lodge. Then we will come to know about his fiction also. That you know, those fictions are very important. David Lodge works. Okay. Some of the criticism has also been made. Um, these are not so important. Mm -hmm some of the criticism made by Ellen Showalter on this these campus fiction authors. Okay, David Lodge has also written some criticism on campus fiction, but those are not so important. They have not, not asked this question. All right. So with that, we will move on to Angela Carter. Angela Carter, she was born in 1940, died in 1992. Now, she is, um, Angela Carter is very famous for her magic realism, if you remember. She is very fam famous for her, uh, I mean, the introduction of magic realism in her works. Okay, so Angela Carter is in world literature, she is in which chapter? Can you tell me? One around one seven. One eighty six. Okay. Yeah. So Angela Carter, uh, Angela Olive Carter, her full name who published and as Angela Carter was an English novelist and journalist and famous for her feminist magical realism and picaresque work. This is very important. Feminist magic realism and picaresque work. This question has been asked in UGC. That Angela Carter is famous for which kind of work? So feminist magic realism picaresque work. Feminist idea hoonge, magic realism will be there. So magic realism is that you are introducing some magic or some supernatural element in, in, in a fiction which seems very realistic. Okay, this fiction is very realistic. All of a sudden something happens which is magical. So that is magic realism. Okay, Re in realism you are uh, occupying, you are introducing magic. Okay, magic realism. So her feminist magical realism and uh, picaresque world. This question has been asked in which you see in 2012, Knights at the Circus was selected as the best ever winner of James Tate Black Memorial Prize. Okay. Knights at the Circus was selected. Knights at the Circus was published, I mean, in 1984. But in 2012, it was selected as the best ever winner of James Tate Black Memorial Prize. Now, let us see her major works. Okay. Yes, so first we have Shadow Dance. Shadow, Shadow Dance published in 1966. So Shadow Dance, Several Perceptions, Love. Remember these three names. Okay, it is in World Literature in your face. You do not need to write. Just uh, sit with your book and that's it. Okay. So Shadow Dance, Several Perceptions and Love. These three novels are published as a trilogy. Okay as a trilogy which is known as Bristol Trilogy, okay, Bristol Trilogy. 
do remember this shadow dance several perception and love because you are getting questions from trilogy every now and then that's why i'm telling you this so several perception love and shadow dance published under the bristol trilogy okay it was published under the name honey bazaar okay a kind of pseudonym that she has used honey bazaar shadow dance shadow dance was published under this uh, uh, this name honey bazaar then we have the next work the magic toy shop very important work read the summary of this work there is a character melani her parents are dead in a plane crash okay she is living with her siblings victoria and jonathan because her parents are dead so she is living with her siblings victoria and jonathan they went to uncle philip's toy shop but this uncle is actually very tyrannical okay he is not very good he is not there to welcome melani and uh, her siblings okay he is very tyrannical so uncle philip's toy shop that's why it is called magic toy shop where uh, melani and uh, siblings they, they were also i mean um, selling the toy in their uncle's shop so that kind of story is there but you will find in magic toy shop the magic realism elements of magic realism so do read the plot right now if you can't just remember at least the name of the character melani victoria and jonathan and whose shop was there so uncle philip's toy shop and he is tyrant of okay. then we have heroes and villains this is not so important the infernal desire machines of dr hoffman this is also not so important so you can just remember the title the passion of new eve this is also not so much important night at the circus this is important night at the circus 1984 is very important there is this character sophie who is aerialist aerialist is a kind of gymnast okay gymnast Air, uh, sophie is the um, i mean aerialist in night at the circus Air, aerialist wo jo circus mein dekha hoga jo aise jump karte hain ek jagah se dusri jagah they are hanging on something jumping from one place to another okay so sophie is that particular character she is playing that role in the circus then we have jack walser who is also a gymnast in this story night at the circus do read the i mean the summary of this one very important night at the circus then the next novel is why is children why is children published in 1991 why this particular work is very famous because it has a reference from shakespeare it has its reference from shakespeare okay it is a carnivalesque or magic realism there, there is there is this technique of carnivalesque which has been introduced by mikhail bakhtin so this this thing you will see in wise children novel as well as magic realism okay in wise children you will see these two elements and it has a reference uh, from shakespeare okay there is this character dora and nora you will see in wise wise children okay dora and nora <laughs> Fine. So, wise children has a reference from Shakespeare. Do remember this? There is this character Dora and Nora. It has the elements of carnivalesque as well as magic realism. Okay. So, uh, the Company of Wolves, written by Angela Carter, as well as Magic Toy Shop. These two works have been, I mean, adopted into film. Okay. Okay. All right. now one important information is that at the time of her death carter had started work on a sequel to charlotte bronte's jane eyre okay she has started to work on a sequel to charlotte bronte's jane eyre based on the later life of jane's step daughter adele warns but only a synopsis survives okay but she died because angela carter died that's why she was not able to complete that okay only a synopsis survives of this of that writing she died at the age of 51 in 1992 of lung cancer at her home in london now if you will read her short fictions if you will uh, look at her short fictions such as fireworks uh, nine profane pieces the bloody chamber these are all important works so let's have a look at those i mean works also okay so we have see short fictions now in short fiction what are the important work that we have to at least remember fireworks nine profane pieces okay 
then bloody chamber very very important very very important bloody chamber it is the collection of a short story collection of short stories then black venus black venus this is also very important i am to read what happened name or i mean you have to read the name or the plot this is what you are asking yeah yeah i will tell you fireworks nine profane pieces just read i mean remember the name bloody chamber read this story in the in this collection bloody chamber there is this story called bloody chamber okay read that story only not all the stories okay because this bloody chamber is actually a feminist retelling of blue bird tale it is a feminist retelling of blue bird tale this is important information it's a feminist retelling of uh, blue bird tale okay see based on blue bird and blue bird is a french folk tale so do remember it is based on blue bird tale and this blue bird is actually a french folk tale so on on the basis of that he she has written this particular story bloody chamber so if you will see there is this uh, the narrator a beautiful teenage girl marries an older wealthy french marquis who met her while she was playing the piano at tea party her governess though pleased she has made a good match knows the marquis has formerly wed three women okay bloody chamber see this particular teenage girl marries a person french marquis whom she thinks that he is a very good person he is old but he is good but later on they have realized that french marquis is already married three times okay and none of the uh, wife of french marquis survived till date so what happened they died in mysterious circumstances that's why you see the title bloody chamber okay so read okay. the plot this is very interesting doesn't it seems like very interesting kind of story read it yeah yes then we have black venus black venus why it is important because see it was published as saints and strangers in the united states and it was influenced by baudelaire okay baudelaire if you remember in black venus carter angela carter takes elements from the poetry of famous french poet and places them in a very different paradigm and that french poet is baudelaire baudelaire has written this particular poem black venus okay he has used this baudelaire was a french poet if you remember He has written yeah, about Inui. Yeah, Inui and this frustration of his time. He is expressing all those ideas, and he is associated with symbolist poet, French symbolist poet. Yeah. Okay, so he was a kind of forefather to the French symbolist movement. So Black Venus, he has written a particular poem, Black Venus. But this Black Venus is very different. Okay, that Black Venus, which has been written by Baudelaire, uh, is very different from this one. because she is trying to uh, put this particular uh, work short fiction into present context that black venus was a poem this is a kind of uh, story short fiction okay so do remember that it was influenced by baudelaire because this question has been asked in ugc ne okay mark it down black venus it was influenced by baudelaire and it has been asked the title or they might have asked about uh, i mean uh, Angela Carter while writing Black Venus was influenced by which French author? So it is Baudelaire. Okay, this question has been asked. Do remember this. Then we have children book, The Donkey Prince, Comic and Curious Cat. Just remember the title. Okay, so that's it from Angela Carter. Have you understood? Yeah. All right, great. So with that, I mean, in the next class we will be discussing about Patrick Cavan. then jp don levy anthony powell okay we will read about these authors in the next class then we have david story joyce carey angus wilson angus wilson associated with uh, this uh, campus fiction anthony burgess and peter aquai so we will be reading about all these authors don't worry that's it for